Hi again, we're back. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about what goes on in the cell. So we're going to keep going through Chapter 3. We're going to talk about cell division, also called mitosis. Um, that's cellular reproduction. Um, if it's a single-celled creature, which we're not, but um, in single-celled creatures, this is um, sometimes referred to asexual reproduction or cloning. Or if we're talking about bacteria, binary fission, a lot of the, the steps and everything are very similar. But for us, mitosis is cell division. And why do we use cell division? Why does that happen in us? We use it to grow and repair our bodies. Like you're not the same size you were when you were a baby. Um, poor mother. <laughs> um, so you're not the same size you were when you were a baby. So you must have grown. And it's not our cells have gotten bigger. We have more cells. You're made of more cells now than you were when you were born. Um, so let's take a look. These are some um, really amazing pictures of the early part of cell division happening. So um, our cells go through a cycle, kind of like a life cycle. And I guess you could say it ends. It doesn't end. They don't die. But it ends with reproduction and the cycle starts over again. Um, and at the beginning of that is this phase we call interphase. So when a cell is in interphase, it's just hanging out. It's doing its job. Um, it's... Um, just functioning, it's growing, um, it's copying DNA, it's um, producing new organelles, and it's getting larger in size. So um, as that time passes, now some cells, I know I kind of cut myself off, some cells never leave interface, like your nerve cells in your brain. If they get destroyed, you don't divide and make new ones. They're in interface forever. They're in this G0 phase, which is sort of like a, guess what? I'm so busy. You've got me doing so many things and firing off so many thoughts. I don't have time to be dividing, so I'm not going to. So that's why, as an aside, injuries to the brain or spinal cord can be so damaging because those cells don't, don't repair or regrow. They don't go through mitosis. So right here, what we're seeing is a setup for mitosis. Mitosis is cell division. So to make two new cells, basically what needs to happen is I need to have everything that I had in the original cell needs to be in both new cells. So I need to have cell membrane, cytoplasm, all the other organelles, nucleus, DNA, and I can't just cut my DNA in half. I need to have the same DNA in each cell. If I'm going to make two cells, I want this cell to make skin, and I want this cell to know how to make skin too. I don't want one to be like making skin, the other, who knows what, broken. Um, so the DNA also needs to be copied. So that's what's been going on in interphase. It's just been copying. That process has been going on. As we start getting into a, a, the mitosis phase, which starts with prophase, the nucleus actually will start to disintegrate. It'll start to disappear. And the chromosomes will start to be visible. So here, early in prophase, we start to see the little squiggly chromosomes form. So instead of that messy mass of chromatin, they're winding up and forming into these neat little wiggly worms um, that we would call chromosomes. And when a cell is about to divide, the chromosomes are paired up. They look kind of like an X. Um, there's two kind of stuck together. Why is there two stuck together like that? Remember, the DNA just copied, and I need one to go in one cell, I need the other to go in the other cell. That's why there's two. There's two of each chromosome. Next, as we go through these phases, the next phase is called metaphase, the chromosomes line up at the middle. So so let's let's just kind of Let's just kind of go back really fast, sorry. Um, these phases you can think of as interphase, that's its own time, and then the phases of mitosis are PMAT. So you can remember it, IPMAT. Not to be childish, but um, that's that's my brother. His name is Matt. Hi. Um, and so if he's there pounding on the door and you're in the bathroom, like, what are you doing? You can just be like, IP, Matt. Okay, leave me alone. Um, sorry, I know it's childish, but maybe you'll remember the phases in order, I, P, mass. So, P, mass, prophase, what's happening? The chromosomes are becoming visible. What happened in inner, you know, this is a great place in your notes to do one of these, make a chart. 
make a list of the phases and then just name and then what's happening. So an interphase, the cell is doing its job, copying DNA, growing. In prophase, the chromatin, chromatin is forming into chromosomes and the nucleus disappears. We are able to see the chromosomes duplicated. Then in metaphase, here's where they start being really easy to remember. These are easy, like you, you got this, okay? In metaphase, the chromosomes line up in the middle, M for middle. So do you see how in there in the middle? A lot of times we call that the equator. Think of like the earth, the middle of the earth is the equator. You know, they could just say middle, but. And then what's happening? Look, remember in our little cell talk, we talked about the um, centrioles, their little pieces of pasta. Well, they're doing something. They're, they're activating and they're moving and they're forming something we call spindle. And these spindle fibers connect to the, we'll just call it the middle for right now because we don't need to get into such detail, the middle of the chromosome. And they're, they're kind of like, like a fishing line. Whoop. So the, the central is like the fisherman and it's sending out the spindle. That's like the fishing line and they hook to the middle of this chromosome pair. Then in anaphase, the chromosomes move away from each other, away from the middle, A for away. Okay. How are they doing that? Well, the centriole, remember the fisherman with the fishing line? He's reeling them in. So the spindle that's attached now is being pulled in and it pulls them apart. And then in telophase, and then the last bit is cytokinesis, in telophase we can see we'll have two new nuclei, and we can start to see two, and two new cells. So once the cytoplasm splits in cytokinesis, then we have our fully realized two new cells. That's mitosis. Those are the phases that you need to know, and that's what's happening. Um, so what about specialized cells? Because all cells aren't just skin cells. We have skin cells, eye cells, um, epithelial cells that line the inside of our mouth and nose and, and intestines. We have heart cells, lung cells, blood cells, red, so red blood cells, white blood cells, platelets. We've got so many types of cells, nerve cells. They're specialized. They've received signals that has um, told them, okay, well, you're going to do this job and this job only. They've become differentiated or specialized. Sometimes specialized cells lose the ability to form, perform some other life functions. So it's kind of like they're dependent on all the other things around them. So nerve and heart muscle cells can't normally be replaced. They don't d divide. They're arrested. They're stuck in the interphase, like I said earlier. Um, they don't divide. So that's why damage to our heart and, and brain um, can be so devastating because those um, cells are not going to go through mitosis. They're not going to divide until we don't get them back. So if we lose function, that function is gone for good. Now, here's what's important about mitosis and why it's important for us to understand all these things with the cell. Cancer is the result of out of control or malfunctioning mitosis. A tumor results when cell division isn't going the right way. So what's going on? What's happened? Well, at each part of the cell cycle, not each part, but at three different parts of the cell cycle, there are checkpoints that happen. The cell sort of checks, is division happening properly? Do we copy all the DNA? Are you sure you got all of it? Because we know we need all of it. Um, do we have enough organelles? Um, is our size okay? Do the chromosomes line up the right way? Those are checkpoints. Well, cancer cells blow through those checkpoints. So maybe the DNA is not copied. Maybe they are just like, I don't know, I'm just going to copy it again and again and again. We'll get, we'll get, it's okay, we've got eight copies of this chromosome, but it's fine, it's fine, we're, we're good. Um, and they just kind of pass through these checkpoints, and they're rapidly going through cell division. That's cancer. Um, a benign tumor is composed of cells that are confined to like a, a small area. A malignant tumor is one that's going to continue to grow, and they crowd out healthy cells, and they divert um, blood vessels to themselves to receive the nu nutrients, and your healthy cells get nothing. Um, and if um, the malignant tumor will spread through your body, that's called metastasis. So they might, you might have heard cancer metastasized. 
Um, if you're thinking about going in and doing stuff with like nursing and stuff, that's something that maybe you should be familiar with that term. Um, so really, this is why this is why there's not a cure for cancer. It's not like we are. It's not a sickness that has come into us. It's our own cells that have betrayed us. How, cells, how could you? They've done it to me too. How could you do this to me? Um, it's it's something that happens. How does this happen? Well, um, chemicals like it from smoking could could cause you from like cigarette smoke could cause um, malfunctions. Um, being exposed to radiation. Even sunlight radiation, ultraviolet radiation can damage your DNA and cause mitosis to go haywire. So that's why we have to do things like protect our skin and protect our body from harmful chemicals. So it's less likely for that to happen. It could be genetic. Um, so that's an important reason why we study mitosis. And if we can figure out that and, and how the, the code has gone wrong and where things have gone wrong, that's where research is being done for um, medications or cancer drugs or chemotherapy. Um, so how about there's another type of cell division that we would call meiosis. Of course, it has to sound just like mitosis to make things harder to remember. I didn't come up with these names, by the way. Um, so meiosis is a type of cell division that happens only in these cells called gametes. Those are your egg or sperm cells. Um, we call those gametes or sex cells. Here's how easy meiosis is to remember. Do you remember mitosis? Remember cell division, how it goes through the IP mat and, it, and we have our cell division? Well, guess what? In meiosis, basically, mitosis happens twice. It's IP mat and then P mat. We skip the I in the second one. There's no time for the cell to copy its DNA again. DNA gets copied. We go through mitosis, we go through mitosis again. It's called reduction division. We end up with half as many chromosomes as what we started with. Why? Why would we want that to happen? Well, remember, to make a new human, for example, we need an egg and a sperm cell. We need those to come together. Um, so I can't have 46 chromosomes and 46 on it with 92 chromosomes. That's not a human. So I need to reduce the amount of chromosomes in the cells that are used for reproduction by half, 23 and 23. And when they come together, they'll make a fully realized person with 46 chromosomes. Okay, so what you should know about meiosis, it's mitosis twice. We reduce the number of chromosomes. And take a look at some of the special things that are happening here. Here the chromosomes sort of like held hands. They exchange some DNA. So now we have something we'd call a recombinant chromosome, a chromosome that has DNA from its neighbor or its friend. So we have a new chromosome. It's made with different, a uh, different combination of DNA. Um, and we only have two chromosomes here, so we don't really have a ton of variety. But this is where we get our variety from. Imagine we have to split up 46 chromosomes. We could have all sorts of different combinations of chromosomes here in these egg and sperm cells. Um, so meiosis gives us variety. Mitosis gives us exact same clones. Meiosis reduces the amount by half and we end up with variety. I'll, um, I'll actually try to link some videos that explain the difference between mitosis and meiosis for you. Um, if you'd like to go into more detail with that, I think it would be very, very helpful because they illustrate it and walk you through. It was super helpful to me, and I think it will be helpful to you. Um, so this just this just is to show you, like, hey, here's the difference between meiosis in a sperm cell and an egg cell. The little origin cell for a sperm cell, these names are so cute. I'm sorry, they are. It's spermatogonium. And then we have a spermatocyte, and then once they start going through their divisions, um, and then they finish and we add a little flagella on, they, they end up being sperm cells. And you can see they have half the number of chromosomes as, chromosomes as the original. And the origin egg cell is called the oogonium. So once this thing goes through a its first division, egg cells are a little bit different. They'll form this oocyte in a polar body. 
On the polar body, they, they are not egg cells. They are not fertilized. Um, and then the oocyte, once it's once it detects the sperm cell, it'll go through this secondary my, meiotic division and become the egg cell. So we don't need to memorize that right now for this course. We're not really going into cell biology, but just to kind of give you a little insight that sperm cells and egg cells, even though they're formed by this process called meiosis, they're formed differently from each other and they're a little bit different. So to recap, mitosis, they make body cells. They make identical cells. They have the same number of chromosomes as the original cell. This is used for growth and repair. If something goes wrong here, that's where you end up having cancer. It goes through that IPMAT phase and then boop, we have two what we call daughter cells. Meiosis, reduction division, we get variety. We're making not body cells, but gametes, sex cells that we call egg or sperm cells. So we go through that I, then PMAT, then PMAT again, and we end up with half the number of chromosomes as the parent. Okay, so that was like a quick summary. Again, the I don't think I really said, but these videos are here to sort of help summarize and help put together the important pieces you need to know from your reading. Are you reading this book? Is, this is, hey, this is a great book. Let me tell you, it's got a lot of highly detailed information and I'm trying to go over the important bits of that. So I hope this is helpful to you. <gasps> Spoiler, I'm gonna do something a little different. I'll, I'll arrange it a little different for our next video. Um, but I hope this helps you understand our two types of cell division, mitosis and meiosis. And I'll link some other videos to help you with that. And I will see you soon. Bye.